Hello there, live from London, this is BBC News. After validating the controversial water waste plan for the Fukushima nuclear power site, the International Atomic Energy Agency says it has no power to put this plan in place. I don't have the authority, or the IEA does not have the authority to stop or to start anything. This is a sovereign decision by Japan and by the operator, when they start, when they stop. The Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko casts doubt over the whereabouts of the Wagner mercenary group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin after saying he could be in St. Petersburg or somewhere else. And a BBC investigation has found that dangerous muscle-building supplements are being sold across the UK. Hello there, I'm Rich Preston. A very warm welcome to the programme. The head of the UN's nuclear watchdog has given a press conference following his approval of controversial plans to release water from the wrecked Fukushima nuclear power plant into the sea. More than a million tonnes of treated wastewater has accumulated there since the 2011 tsunami, which severely damaged the plant. Japan now wants to start discharging that water into the Pacific Ocean. The International Atomic Energy Agency has published a report saying Japan's plan meets its international standards. Here's what the IAEA's Director General had to say a little earlier. Rupert Wingfield Hayes for us in Bangkok. Rupert, thank you very much. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC News bringing you different stories from across the UK. Tuesday morning and the street. For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. Hello, you're live with BBC News. Very good to have your company. The counteroffensive in Ukraine is entering its second month, and while it's been met with fierce Russian resistance, there has also been criticism from some quarters that it's not making enough progress. And while it's certainly proving costly, many experts say Ukraine simply needs more time to prepare for a strategic breakthrough. The BBC's Andrew Harding sent this report from eastern Ukraine. Now, just before we go, just a reminder of one of our top stories this hour. The US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has begun a series of high-level meetings in Beijing. In her talks, she said she is concerned over China's semiconductor minerals export controls. This is Ms Yellen speaking a little earlier in Beijing. She's currently holding a press conference. It's a significant visit and the, the second major visit by a senior official from the Biden administration in as many months. Anthony Blinken was there last month. Uh, he said he has hope and expectations of better communications and better engagement going forward with China. Uh, we'll see what comes out of those talks. We'll bring you the latest here. Do stick with us on BBC News. Now on BBC News, the latest business news from across the globe. World Business Report. Hello, live from London. This is BBC News. We seek healthy economic competition, the US Treasury Secretary tells Janet, uh, tells Chinese leaders ahead of high-stakes talks between the world's top economies. Germany's economy is not out of the woods yet as industrial production unexpectedly falls. Can it shake off its recession? Also coming up, logistical nightmare. 340,000 UPS workers prepare to walk out in what could be one of the biggest strikes in US history. Hello there, we start in Beijing where the US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is on a mission to try to restore communications between the world's top 
two economies. Tensions have flared over Washington's efforts to limit Chinese access to advanced computer chips. Just this week, Beijing tightened export restrictions on two rare minerals, both used in the chip industry. Speaking a few moments ago, she called for market reforms in the world's second largest economy and warned that the US and its allies will fight back against what she called China's unfair economic practices. But she insisted that the two economies must remain closely interlinked. Okay, let's check in with some of the day's other business stories, starting with Samsung. The company says it expects its profits to be down 96% in the three months to the end of June, the lowest in 14 years. The South Korean tech giant is suffering big losses in its memory chip business because of a drop in demand for smartphones and other devices amid a global economic slowdown. Travellers in London could face a week of disruption later on this month after a union announced strike action by London Underground workers from Sunday the 23rd of July until the following Friday. The rail with Transport for London is over pensions, jobs and working conditions which the union said would put 600 jobs at risk. And coming up, Viva Las Vegas, America's entertainment capital, bounces back from the pandemic, more profitable than ever. We'll be speaking to the city's tourism chief. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC With BBC News. We're going to stay with stories from the United States because businesses there are braced for what could be one of the biggest strikes in the country's history. 340,000 workers at UPS are preparing to walk out after the company failed to reach an agreement with the union, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. UPS moves goods worth an estimated 6% of US GDP in the brown trucks every day and a strike could have far-reaching implications for the economy. As the BBC's Michelle Flurry reports from New York. That letter, um, Meta has uh, discredited completely, saying it's just not true. We haven't gone and taken all the Twitter staff in our engineering team. Lots more on that spat on the website, bbc.com forward slash news. Thank you very much for your time and your company. Rich will be back with your headlines in just a moment. We'll see you soon. Bye bye. Hello there live from London, this is BBC News. After validating the controversial water waste plan for the Fukushima nuclear site, the International Atomic Energy Agency says it has no power to put this plan in place. I don't have the authority, or the IEA does not have the authority to stop or to start anything. This is a sovereign decision by Japan and by the operator, when they start, when they stop. The Belarusian leader Alexander Lukashenko casts doubt over the whereabouts of the Wagner mercenary group leader Yevgeny Prigozhin. Ukraine's counter-offensive enters its second month with Russian resistance and some internal criticism of not having made enough progress. And a BBC investigation has found that dangerous muscle building supplements are being sold across the UK. Hello there, I'm Rich Preston, a very warm welcome to the programme. And we start in Japan, where the head of the UN's nuclear watchdog has been speaking after approving controversial plans to release water from the wrecked Fukushima nuclear plant into the sea. More than a million tonnes of treated wastewater has accumulated there since the 2011 tsunami, which severely damaged the facility. Japan now wants to start discharging that water into the Pacific. In a report, the International Atomic Energy Agency says Tokyo's plan meets its international standards. Here's what the IAEA's Director General had to say a little earlier. 
Okay, Rupert Wingfield here is our correspondent in Bangkok. Rupert, thank you very much. Around the world and across the UK, this is BBC News. BBC News, bringing you different stories from across the UK. Tuesday morning. And the... For more stories from across the UK, head to the BBC News website. Hello, you're live with BBC News. Good to have your company. Switzerland is due to sign a declaration setting out its intention to join a European air defence system known as SkyShield. It was launched by Germany last year in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and is modelled on Israel's Iron Dome system. Burns says a common air defence is in Switzerland's best interests, but there are fears among right-wing politicians the move could undermine Sweden's centuries-old neutrality. Well, let's go to our correspondent Imogen folks who joins us from Geneva. Uh, Imogen, very good morning to you. Tell us a bit more about SkyShield. OK, Guy Hedgeco for us in Pamplona there with the Running of the Bull Festival, which is getting underway. Do stick with us here on BBC News. Hello there. Quite a spell of weather headed